Should juvenile offenders be punished as adults? And New York is one of only two states in the U.S. that prosecutes children as grown-ups. Hernan Carvente says a bad decision that he made at the age of 15 nearly ruined his life. But today, he is a youth advocate for the New York State Juvenile Advisory Group. Hernan, thanks so much for being with us this afternoon. How long have you sit, been sitting on this board? Since January of 2013. Well, now, we're going to go back to when you were 15 all those years ago. You're 21 now. You got in some serious trouble, and you were convicted of, of shooting a, 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 not, a gang member, correct? A rival gang member, yes. You were in a, a youth gang. Yes. Okay. How did you end up, I, I no, we don't have 30 minutes here for you to tell me, but at, why did you feel like that gang was your only option at that age? Well, it wasn't that it was an option. It was just me pretty much succumbing to peer pressure. You know, mm -hmm. my friends were all part of, you know, little little groups here and there. And I decided to join this group primarily because all of my friends were in there. Mm -hmm. And it was just a friendly kind of thing. It, officially, it was something that started off in school and then eventually it grew to something bigger. And at 15, you were convicted of shooting someone. Yes, attempted murder. Attempted murder. And, and you were sentenced to? Two to six years. Two to six years. How many years did you serve? Four years. I'm currently you... under parole supervision. OK, until 2014, yes. I think. So yeah. Next year. You were sent to an adult? I was General? sent to a juvenile facility. A, a maximum? Right, a maximum okay. secure juvenile facility. What was that experience like for you? Well, it was the first time I was away from my family. Um, so for me, it was a shock. I, you know, I'd never been that far away. And in all honesty, for me, the experience was both a shock and it was rewarding in the sense I spent most of my time to myself and I tried to keep myself away from problems. but. In the very beginning, it was hard for me to kind of see myself as something different when the environment showed me, you know, that the negative route was the best way to go, so. And I understand at one point you were on suicide watch in jail. Yes. Well, and, and how did that come about? Well, the pressure, like I said, mm -hmm. in terms of me having, you know, I'd never really taken the time to look at myself and say, you know, what I had done up until that point. Did you try and kill yourself, I mean, or, or, or what? No, it was me basically one day I kind of just snapped into reality saying, you know, wow, my life up to this point, where am I headed? You know, I'm going down the wrong track. And eventually, like I said, I, it, it got to me to the point where I had a moment in one of my, like I said, after a call. And I, there was a few things that were exchanged between me and my parents that really got to me. And when I went back to my cell, it was really me just kind of venting. And mm -hmm. the, the staff took it as me having snapped and wanting to kill myself. Okay, but it, what was the turning point that you said to yourself, you know what, this is not all there is for me. I, I can do better than this, I want more than this, uh, and that means I'm gonna have to do something different. The turning point was when I joined the college program of the facility I was in. Um, it was the first time that somebody had challenged me that much. Um, the professor from that program had really got to me in terms of telling me the things that I was doing wrong without being afraid to tell me the things that I was doing wrong. Mm -hmm. um, it was the first time that somebody had ever questioned, you know, why, why are you doing these things? Made me question my own self. So that was essentially the turning point. Me having met someone who was brave enough to stand up to me and say, you know what? You're messing up your life. What are you doing to yourself? This is pathetic. Get yourself together. You have a child and you're a bright young man. Why are you doing this? So that's essentially what happened. And you listened. Yes. And you heeded that advice, and you moved forward with your life. Now, and, and so far with your education, how far have you gotten? So currently I have 80 credits. I'm a student at John Jay College of Criminal Justice, and I walked out of the facility with 54 credits. So I've actually been able to take three semesters with the current one right now. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully by next year I'll have my degree. Now, you're, I have no doubt that you will have your degree. Congratulations on all your hard work. Thank you. You're sitting on this advisory panel. Why is this important to you? Well, one of the things that New York State often lack, you know, when I'm doing the research and all the, you know, just speaking to different people, is that there's not a lot of youth voice representation. Mm -hmm. And I come from a background, like I said, in terms of me having been in this college program where we had to voice our opinions. We had to, you know, have discussions. And I think it's important for me to be in this board because it's, it's, it's me bringing the voice of the young people that I spent four years of my life with 
but at the same time it's bring, bringing my own experience onto that advisory group so that they're aware of certain things that they might not be you know privy to have they haven't lived through it mm -hmm. they haven't been in these facilities so I, I share that knowledge just based, based off of my own experience. And what are you able to say to them about why you strongly believe that, that, that juveniles should not be, you know, prosecuted like adults? Well, one of the things that I, you know, I always say, and this is basically, I always share my story. Hmm. And the thing that right now, for Ray's age, it comes down to, you know, me having been charged at 15 years old with a conviction, you know, a B felony conviction, and I have to live with that stigma right now. You know, I walked out of the facility a year ago, and that's pretty much been my, my, my barricade in terms of me trying to go forward. It, mm -hmm. It's always pacing a roadblock after roadblock after roadblock. And that's what I, you know, I advocate in this group and other groups that we don't want to place roadblocks for young people. You know, we want young people to succeed. They have the capacity to change. I'm an example of a change. Um, at 15 years old, like I said, I could have easily tracked another route, and I didn't. So that's the route, or that's what I tell these advisory group members and any other person that I come across. Well, you're going to stay with us because we're going to continue to talk about this issue. Still ahead, should the age of criminal responsibility be raised in New York? We're going to continue the conversation. Stay with us. Now, some say jailing juveniles alongside adults is a mistake. The Correctional Association's Raise the Age campaign is pushing for reform of the juvenile justice system. It seeks to raise the age of criminal responsibility in New York to 18 years of age. We've been talking to Hernan Carvant Vinte, and now joining us is Angelo Pinto, the organizer of the Raise the Age campaign, and Kai Smith, founder and executive director of Graphics, a program designed to help troubled youth. Thank you, gentlemen, for being with us this Thank afternoon. Angelo, I'm going to start with you raise the age campaign why did you start this definitely so New York State is one of two states that automatically prosecute 16 and 17 year olds as adults for any crime that they commit New York State also prosecutes 13 14 and 15 year olds as adults for certain crimes and in New York a child as young as seven can be arrested so that's in general why we started this campaign and thought it was important um, it's important to say that there's been certain progress in juvenile justice throughout the country and in New York State that has made the time kind of right to address this raise the age issue. It's something that's been on advocates' radars for a long time, but the time is kind of right to address it. Specifically, when you think about New York State, you're talking about 40 to 50,000 youth, 16 and 17 year olds, every year that come in contact with the system. So when folks say, you know, why raise the age, we usually say there's about 40,000 reasons to do so. Um, we don't often talk about the specifics of the stories, but each of those stories are very compelling reasons on why this issue is important to address. Uh, I think Hernan's story is, is and, and what's happened to him as a young man Definitely. certainly shows that a lot of kids are being put in a position where their talents, their skills, their lives are wasted in a lot of ways just because of a mistake. Yes. And interestingly enough, we always attach with the campaign, we say raise the age for all youth for all crimes. So we say 16 and 17 year olds who've committed any crime, should the, the age should be raised for them. But there's also another piece of the conversation that we think is very important. If you're 16 and 17 years old and you're prosecuted as an adult in New York State, what that means is you could potentially spend time in an adult jail or mm -hmm. prison. Mm -hmm. And we say that is one of the key reasons why we think raising the age is tremendously important because we don't think 16 and 17 year olds should be housed in adult jails or prisons. Um, I had the opportunity actually prior to coming to the Correctional Association to work on Rikers Island and I saw 16 and 17 year olds on Rikers Island. And although the facility is separated, there's sight and sound separation, there's plenty of spaces where there's co-mingling. Mm -hmm. So the barber shops, the law libraries, and recently because the Correctional Association Association has a, a legislative mandate to monitor conditions. I was able to go to Green, a facility about two hours from the city, and the median age is 23. So I was able to see 16 and 17 year olds in an adult prison. Mm -hmm. um, and what that means, unfortunately, is that some 16 and 17 year olds will find themselves in solitary confinement and subject to a variety of abuses and conditions that's not conducive for their development and growth. Uh, it's not conducive to any sort of rehabilitation exactly. at all. You're essentially putting them on the same path yes. that they were on. And Kai, you, this is how you spend your life, working with young people, trying to yes. keep them from going down that road or to pull them back. Right. Uh, and you have signed on with this campaign because you think it's a very important. Right. So, you know, I, I just think that 
A child shouldn't have to spend the remainder of their lives being held accountable for a mistake that they made as a child. And it's sort of, you know, it, it's sort of similar to, um, you know, if, 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 if you're charged with a crime and you're convicted by a jury of your peers and you're sent away to pay your debt to society, mm -hmm. once that debt to society has been paid, and the state of New York deems you to be released, if the debt is paid, why do you have to spend the remainder of your life paying the debt? Mm -hmm. You can't apply for employment, you can't get public housing, and the list goes on and on. So if a child is, if a child is convicted at the age of 15 or 16 or 17 years old, and they're released from, uh, released from confinement at the age of 19 or 20, uh, the last time I read a report, it said the, the average lifespan for, you know, an African-American or Hispanic kid or, or, or man is 75 years old. So you're talking about from 20 years old to 80 years old not being able to afford to reap the benefits of being a general American citizen. And, and really not being, um, not only reap the benefits, but n really not being able to be productive in your yes. own life. Yeah. So the, in your estimation, that the country loses when you don't have Absolutely. these young people, Absolutely. Uh, you know, being gainfully employed, Absolutely. Uh, being really contributing to society in a positive way merely because they are they are straddled with this you know with the stigma of having been convicted at such a young age Absolutely. are people listening you know new york state is a state that we generally think of as being one of the more progressive right. um there's only one other state in the country that has this as you pointed out north yeah. carolina. carolina um do you think this is the time you're going to get this change Are people are willing to listen i think so i think there's a variety of factors that make it the time um i think Recently, Connecticut has raised the age, mm -hmm. so New York and North Carolina are kind of fighting for that last spot that nobody <laughs> wants to have. Um, I think also the, the, the fiscal issues of the, of the state, you know, we're spending a lot of money incarcerating folks in New York State and around the country, as you mentioned, and I think it's time to make a shift, and I think the governor has begun.